So I'm Robin Hall. I'm from uh, the React Home group. I'm fortunately not here to talk today about the React Home Pathway database, but instead about our React Home Functional Interaction Network Cytoscape plugin, which is quite a mouthful, so I'm just going to talk about React Home FI. Um, and particularly um, what I want to talk about, how we've developed this plugin uh, to aid in the analysis of high throughput data sets, particularly uh, disease and cancer data sets. Uh, and the rationale, obviously, behind this is that we know that uh, no single mutated gene is necessary and sufficient to cause cancer. Typically, you have one or two common mutations like p53, uh, MIC, and, and plus uh, a whole plethora of rarer mutations. And analyzing mutated genes in the network context uh, will re hopefully reveal the relationship amongst these genes, uh, elucidate the mechanism of action of these drivers, and facilitate some form of hypothesis generation on the roles of the genes in a disease phenotype. Um, and in particular, our approach is using this module-based analysis is to reduce hundreds, maybe even thousands of mutated genes down to a dozen or so mutated pathways. So I'll just first by start the, by defining the term functional interaction network. It's a highly reliable, uh, high coverage uh, interaction network based on manually curated pathways and extended with predicted interactions. The plugin that we've developed is a resource for constructing functional interaction subnetworks based upon gene lists. And we provide a series of tools that will provide uh, the underlying evidence for these FIs, identify network modules of tightly, tightly connected genes, um, perform functional enrichment analysis to annotate these modules. Um, and we have some other tools that allow you to display the source pathway diagrams and to overlay additional um, functional annotations and gene annotations. Uh, this uh, approach was published a couple of years ago, uh, but we've been working on the last 18 months, a couple of years, uh, on the uh, newer updates to the React Home Functional Interaction Network that I'll talk about today. Um, so just give you, oh, sorry, I just wanted to just remind you, here at the bottom there is a wiki which links you to the plugin where you can find information, tutorials, example data sets, uh, and a guide to using the different aspects of the tool. Um, so in order to construct this uh, functional interaction network, uh, we started off by extracting curated interactions from React Home and other pathway databases. And then we used a simple machine learning based approach uh, to score protein pairwise data sets from a variety of different resources. It includes protein-protein interactions, uh, some shared Go annotations and co-expression data. And then what we did was we took the, uh, once we'd scored these protein pairwise relationships, we, we merged the high scoring uh, interactions and the extracted curated interactions to form this uh, functional interaction network. Uh, as of just this year, quite uh, just a matter of a few months ago, um, the network contains 273,000 interactions poses about 11,000 proteins. This is up on the 2010 version, which contained 210,000 interactions and about 9,500 proteins. We've also included uh, mod encode, and, sorry, sorry, encode interactions, and we've removed intera uh, protein DNA interactions that we had previously curated from TRED, and we've removed some cell map annotations as well. So the pipeline for analysis is as follows. Uh, you take your gene list, it could be any type of gene list, you projected it into the, the functional interaction network, subtracting away the genes that are not part of your data set, leaving you with a smaller subnet, which will hopefully help to identify elements of the disease and, uh, and cancer. You can apply a series of clustering algorithms to identify those modules. You can then apply a series of enrichment analysis to either label these modules with pathway or gene ontology terms. Um, potentially using, uh, if clinical information is available, you can perform some form of survival analysis, which is kind of cool. And then hopefully the, the whole purpose here is to generate some biological hypothesis, predict disease gene function, and in the case of the survival analysis, you could potentially classify patients and samples, which is kind of cool. For the uh, technical geeks amongst us, this is a software architecture. It's a three-tier system. We have a MySQL backend, which hosts the FI uh, database and the uh, uh, pathway databases in the Cancer Gene Index. Um, we use Hibernate to communicate with these databases, and we also use a React Home API, which directly connects with React Home content. Um, 
the middle side also conveys some elements which um, perform the clustering analysis and the enrichment analysis. Um, and then on the front end, obviously, it's Cytoscape. Um, we obviously use a RESTful web service to connect to the databases, and we're using XML rather than JSON. So just want to take a moment to describe some of the file formats that are um, useful, that are used by the plugin. This was a question that was asked this morning. So you can take just a simple gene list. That's the gene names themselves. You could take a, a gene sample um, pair list, which is basically, again, the gene list in the first column, and the sample number reflects the number of times that that gene is potentially mutated within those samples. It's optional to put a third column, which is actually giving you the sample names. The third option is to, which is kind of really cool now, is to um, upload a mutation annotation file. I've got that acronym right. This is from NCI. So this is a kind of standard data exchange format for uh, genome data sets, particularly cancer data sets. Uh, and then the fourth option is to upload a microarray data file as well. Uh, point again, the first it's important to have the first column is your gene names, and the subsequent columns are pre-normalized expression data. So once you upload that data into uh, the FI plugin, a network's created. Uh, just to point out with these functional interactions, uh, there's three edge attributes. It's information about the annotation, the direction, and the score. For predicted FI, it's going to be somewhere between, uh, I think, 0.6 and 0.9. And then an FI score for a true interaction, a curated interaction is going to be 1. Um, we also display uh, um, edge direction. So the arrow represents activating, catalyzing events, the vertical line inhibition, the solid line just on its own represent elements of, it, um, of complexes. And then these dotted lines you can see here on the right represent the, the predicted functional interactions. Uh, through a series of conceptual uh, menus, we can query the uh, uh, functional interaction sources. Uh, you can link back to the pathway databases and potentially even to the publications themselves. And you can also fetch additional functional interactions for a given node. The next step of the analysis is obviously to identify those tightly connected genes. So the plugin uses a spectral partitioning algorithm developed by Newman uh, uh, for most of the data sets that we can upload. In the case of the gene expression data set, we just use a different algorithm using MCL graph. After clustering the nodes in the different network modules, Will be shown in different will be shown in different colors. Once you've identified these modules, you can then perform enrichment analysis to identify uh, key pathway or gene ontology terms associated with the genes within those modules. You can filter based on uh, the module size or FDR. We also provide the opportunity to overlay additional cancer-related annotations from the NCI uh, Cancer Gene Index. So again, concept menu, you can, um, in the control panel, load the entire uh, NCI disease terms in a hierarchy. When selecting one of those terms, we'll color code all of the nodes within the network uh, with that particular disease attribute. Alternatively, you could select an individual node within the network, right click, and just fetch all of the cancer gene index annotations for that particular node. So you'll find things like publications, clinical studies that that gene's been involved in. And finally, um, uh, a single network module or a set of modules could be uh, used as a signature of cancer patient uh, prognosis. And with the, pub the plugin, you can perform either Cox proportional hazards or uh, Kaplan mild survival analysis. It's recommended to use the Cox proportional hazards and initially to identify significant modules that are significantly related to survival times and then to repeat the Kaplan-Meier analysis on an individual module. Uh, and in that case, when you repeat that analysis on a single module, you break the samples uh, into two groups, um, samples having no mutated genes in a selected um, module and then those genes that have uh, genes mutated in a selected module. So just uh, very quickly, uh, in the last few minutes, just walk you through uh, the analysis of a cancer genome data set. Uh, so what we've done is downloaded the mutation annotation file uh, from a Cancer Genome Atlas Consortium, which was published in Nature 2011. 
So this is, we're going to look at high-grade serous ovarian cancer exome sequencing data from 316 uh, patient samples. Um, and the MAF file itself contains over 8,000 non-synonymous uh, mutations. And also, which is nice about this data set, is there's also survival data. So we can actually look to see if there is a prognostic signature. So um, the plugin starts by constructing the functional interaction subnetwork. Um, so this subnetwork consists of about 490 nodes uh, where the genes have been mutated in at least three of those samples. So that actually gives you an indication that a lot of those mutations are super rare mutations that may well not be as informative. Uh, but we do have 1,700 edges within this network, so you can now query the relationship between those, uh, not just the driver mutation, which is P53. This is this, oops, sorry, I'm just, I think we've lost the, uh, P53 here, this is a big yellow no, no, uh, node. So that's another thing to point out, the node size is proportional to the number of times that gene is mutated. So P53 you'll find is mutated in 95% of ovarian cancer samples. And the node size um, of the other nodes is going to suggest that these mutations are quite rare. Um, so the next step, obviously, in this analysis is to kind of organize a little, little bit more of this information. So we break these genes down into these modules, perform <coughs> a spectral clustering algorithm, and then uh, performing enrichment analysis. You can see at the top here on the left is the P53 module. Um, and then you can see uh, the other modules uh, with the, containing these rare mutations. And you can see here labeled uh, separately the, the pathways that are enriched for those particular gene functions. So now you can actually take, you know, build a hypothesis and take it back to the lab and actually validate it. But I want to go just one step further, and that is to actually take that survival data that's also available with this data set. So we've created this module map. Now what we do is we run the survival analysis on this data. So the survival analysis is basically telling you whether, unfortunately, whether a patient has succumbed or survived the disease. And so what we can do is look to see if these genes um, can act as a prognostic, or these genes within these modules can act as a prognostic signature for patient outcomes. So you can see initially with the Cox, Cox proportional hazards, uh, we have uh, four modules that are statistically significant. Um, module 6 being the most significant. So what I've done is just reanalyzed module 6 using Kaplan-Meier. And what we've done is broken down that, those samples into two groups. Uh, the green line here in the Kaplan-Meier plot represents uh, patient samples with mutated module 6 genes. And then the red line represents patient samples with no mutated module 6 genes. And you can see that there is a... a significant gap between uh, these two lines. It's also shown here as a p-value. So um, the indication here is that G patients with module 6 genes, mutated module 6 genes, have a slightly better prognosis. So what we can do then is uh, go back and ask the question, what are the pathway annotations for that module? And what we can see here, the pathway annotations from module 6, is that these genes are involved in calcium, sig calcium signaling. So here's a thought. Maybe the um, mutations in module 6 genes disrupt calcium homeostasis, and that thereby disrupts um, tumor metastases and overall promoting uh, better patient um, prognosis. Anyway, something to test, maybe to a hypothesis to take back to the clinic to test. So what I've shown is you can take a large data set of hundreds, maybe thousands of mutated, list, mutated genes and break that down into a kind of manageable data set of just a few mutated pathways and potentially uh, discovering a prognostic signature. So just to summarize um, and talk about some of the future work, um, obviously I've just discovered that we should be kind of moving over to Cytoscape version 3. So obviously this current uh, plugin works on versions 2.7 and 2.8. So we need to kind of port that over ASAP. Um, but from the other point of view, we want to increase the size and functionality of the network itself. Uh, we want to add additional sources of functional annotations and interactions. Maybe think about using some other uh, clustering algorithms, which I think Scooter and I should be talking about. <laughs> Uh, but I think what I've shown, hopefully, to you is that the Cytoscape FI network plugin, I've said it, well, provides a powerful way to uh, analyze cancer and disease data sets. It lets anyone do this type of analysis. It's not 
that difficult. I think obviously the difficulty is the interpretation of the results, um, but it does reveal functional relationships amongst cancer and disease genes and potentially identify cancer prognostic signatures. So I just want to finally put an acknowledgement slide up. A lot of this work has been done by one of our developers, Guan Ming Wu, um, and then we had a co-op student, Adrian Duong, who's been doing some more recent updates on the network. And also thank all the, the I should mention also um, from the Reactome database point of view, um, all the curators and developers who actually put the data into Reactome because that actually became the kind of core parts of the curated interactions for this network. And then thank my boss, Lincoln Stein, and all our funding agencies at the bottom there. Thank you, and I'll take questions. So while we're definitely encouraging porting to 3.0, we'll, uh, as a type case core, we're, you know, we're um, committed to supporting 2.8 yeah. for quite a while. Right. Um, and so, you know, as we need to have developers, you know, don't feel like you're going to get out of it right away. And, no. Uh, so but we will eventually. Uh, I, <laughs> I like the ASAP, oh, you're getting like, I like yeah. the ASAP attitude. <laughs> Thank you.